Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Lubuntu. And now I've already created a video showing you how to install every single version of Ubuntu there is. And uh, Lubuntu is part of that family. And the selling point for Lubuntu is that it is a lightweight uh, Linux distribution, which means it works on older hardware or underpowered hardware. Um, it's the desktop is really lightweight, and you will see when I run HTOP. That uh, currently it's using 930 meg, but that's because I'm recording video. Um, generally, uh, idle, it runs about 400 meg. So um, it generally doesn't use much memory at all. The, uh, there is a useful manual on the desktop, and I recommend reading this if you're a new user to Ubuntu. And you can see it's got um, all these chapters showing you how to do certain things, like how to install Ubuntu, um, details about the applications, all the tooling, etc., and tips and tricks. Uh, because uh, Ubuntu is part of the Ubuntu family, um, you can expect the hardware to work um out of the box so for instance i can click here and connect to my wi-fi even though i'm on a wire connection at the moment if i didn't want to use that i could use any of these connections here uh, the printers um, you can press press the windows and r key and that will start the um, one thing and you can type printers And you see printers already set up, or I can click down here and I can type in Bluetooth. And I can do add Bluetooth device and you can see Bluetooth devices appear here. So from that point of view, everything works. Uh, application wise, uh, we've got a notepad, a calculator, file manager, uh, uh, archiving tool. Uh, some notes and things like that. We've got uh, one game. Steam doesn't come with it. I've installed that myself. I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, the graphics, um, we've got LibreOffice Draw. We've got a screen capture tool uh, and a scanning tool. Uh, under Internet, there's a Firefox web browser, an IRC client, and a transmission BitTorrent client. And then you've got LibreOffice and a PDF viewer. Uh, and programming Visual Studio Code doesn't come with it. I installed that. Um, I've been playing around with Ubuntu before doing this review to make sure that I know how things work. And uh, sound of video, um, you get VLC media player. You don't get a dedicated um, audio player. Uh, simple screen recorder word I rec um, installed for the purposes of creating this video. And then other systems tools, you've seen HTOP, which shows you processes and there's Q terminal for various terminals are here as you can see and there's a startup disk creator uh, but the two packages here um, muon and, and discover are what you would use to install extra software uh, if you don't want to if you don't like the menu um, system uh, it is an old school menu system uh, the great thing about Lubuntu is how fast it works. So you've got all the screen animations and um, bloat that make KDE and GNOME use more memory. You don't have that with um, LXQT. You've got this menu. It is kind of old school, um, but there are advantages to it. Um, obviously, um, performance being one of them. Basically, you get to use your applications. The applications use your memory, not your um, desktop environment. Uh, one downside, of course, might be that the, you can see these menus spread out, and so this goes a little bit across the screen. Now, if you've got a low res resolution monitor or a small screen, then obviously that's going to fill up quite quickly. Um, but for most people, it should be fine. Uh, you don't have to use this menu here. You can use the search to find uh, what you're looking for. So you can type Firefox in there. Or as I've shown earlier, you can press the Windows and R key, and that brings up the run command. And you can type in Firefox up there, and that will bring up the Firefox web browser. So if you don't uh, like Firefox, you can use the system tool, and you can go to Package Manager. 
And for instance, as mentioned earlier, we don't have an audio player, so let's go for rhythm box. And mark for installation. Click OK. And then click apply. Then you have to type in your password. And it's adding in the application. And it is as simple as that. So now if I close that, I can press the Windows and R key and I can type Rhythmbox. As you see, Rhythmbox has opened. I can also, um, as mentioned earlier, go to Sound and Vision and pick up Rhythmbox that way. And you can see how responsive the menus and everything are. Um, it really is um, good for navigation. Um, if you want something else that isn't um, part of Muon, so for instance, if I go to System Tools and Muon, uh, well, you can see, for instance, that you can browse through different categories um, such as development and editors, email, etc. So you can either browse and find something that you want, or you can search here. But if I want Chrome, for instance, it's not available as an option. So what you can do is you can go to Discover. And Discover is normally a KDE tool, which is why when you go into these preferences, you see KDE system settings and KDE art. The KDE partition manager and stuff there. They've mixed a few KDE tools in here. So again, if I search for Chrome, it's not going to find it. So what you can do is you can go down to the settings down here. Um, and Flatpak isn't installed by default. What you have to do is enable it. Um, and an optional will appear at the bottom um, because I've already enabled it before. It's not appearing, but an optional will appear saying um, the flat pack backend is missing and you just um, click on it and it installs it. But what you'll notice is that it isn't actually um, turned on. Uh, I need to add in the flat hub um, package manager. Again, this would actually say, do you want to install flat hub? And you type in the password here, and now FlatHub is there. Uh, and down here, um, if your packages need refreshed, you just go down to here, and then um, it will ask you to install any updates. So if I do fetch and updates there, and you can see it's up to date. Uh, so if I go back to all applications, and if, if I search for Chrome, you can see it's available. And if I click into it, it'll tell you where it's available from. So as you see, it's distributed by FlatHub. Now, certain applications are only available in FlatHub. Some are only available in, some of them are Snap packages as well, and you can make a choice. When it comes to Lubuntu, if you're using um, older hardware, you might not want to use a Snap or the flat packs at all. You might just want to use a native Debian package. So you wouldn't install that this way. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And also, if if your ideal is to run as lightweight as possible, even if you have got good hardware, then um, flat packs and Snaps, they use more disk space. Um, they don't necessarily use more memory because they're just installed in all the libraries they need as part of a container. So, but if you do want to use the Debian um, package um, for Chrome, you have to go onto the Chrome website. So we will need Firefox for that. So if I type install Chrome, uh, you can see there's a download button. Make sure you get the right address and it is a um, the Google website you're going to. And what we do is click Download Chrome, accept and install. You want the 64-bit Debian package. And uh, you'll see it's downloaded up here. So I can click on that. And then you've got various 
things you can use. You can use Discover or QApt. I'm going to use QApt. I click Open. And then you click Install Package. And you type in your password. And that's that done. And the benefit of using um, this method is the item appears in the menu straight away, as you can see there. Um, I noticed that when using flat packs, they didn't always appear in the menu straight away, and sometimes you had to reboot your computer to get them to appear. Um, so if you want to keep your system lightweight, then you want the Debian package. The downside is you've got to go searching for some of them on the internet. Not all of them. A lot of them appear in Muon or they appear in Discover, but things like Chrome or indeed Visual Studio Code. If you want the dev package, you've got to go and find the website and click on download. And you can see if I go here, it's got a Debian um, option. And that's what I used to install um, this one here. Now, when it came to Steam, I could just use Muon and go to the Steam installer and, and install it that way. So that's three ways of installing applications. The fourth way is, of course, you can use the terminal and you can use um, the apt command. So if I want to search for a package, I can do sudo apt cache search, um, for instance, Steam. And if I wanted to install that, I would do sudo apt install. And you can see here I've got Steam installer. I would type in Steam installer. And by doing that, it would then ask you, are you sure? You press Y and it would install the software. So that's how you install software using Ubuntu. Um, if you want to keep it really lightweight, go for the Debian packages. If you um, just want the desktop to be light, then you, you can go for the, a mixture of flat packs and snaps. Um, the desktop itself is um, customizable. Um, you're not limited to the way it looks and feels here. So for instance, these panels, I can um, configure the panel. And uh, the first thing you can do is you can choose where the panel is. So at the moment, it's at the bottom. But you can go to the top. You can go to the left, like Ubuntu. You can go to the right. I prefer at the bottom. You can also auto-hide it. Uh, so, as soon as you put a mouse over it, it comes back. But it says as soon as I go down there, it's visible again. Um, styling, you can change um, the opacity. So if I slide that to the left, it makes it more visible, uh, transparent. And if I slide it to the right, it makes it um, more opaque. And you can add a background image, and you can also add different widgets to this panel. You can, of course, change the desktop wallpaper, right click, desktop preferences, um, various things you can do here. You've got these um, icons on the side, they're quite large, you can make them smaller. Or if your vision isn't so good, you can make them as big as you need them to be. And you can change the font that goes with them as well. Uh, we'll go to the Advanced tab. If you don't like these icons at the desktop, you can actually remove them. Or you can just choose the ones that you want. Uh, background. Um, if you don't, if you, if you want a plain background, you can remove that out of there. And then you can choose the color. So for instance, I could have a blue background. Or black background or I can have an image as before and if you click here you can choose various different Lubuntu images but you don't have to choose Lubuntu images you can go to user share LXQT and then go into wallpapers in there and you've got another set of wallpapers like that and uh, of course you can use your own wallpapers
You can also use this uh, configuration center. And one of the things here is appearance. And so um, you've got widget styles, icon themes. So by default, it's this dark one, but you can also go for a light one. Um, and you can change the LXQT theme. So at the moment, it's this Lubuntu arc, but we can go for this KDE Plasma. Uh, remember, the panel is set to light mode, um, a dark color. So you probably want to go into there. Um, styling, change that background color to a lighter color. Uh, so, or you can just turn that off and it will use the default panel color. You can configure various other things, like screensaver for instance. Uh, one of the other things uh, is the global shortcut keys. Um, so you've got various keys that control different things. So if I want to launch my web browser, I can press Control Alt and B. And that loads Firefox. So at this point, I could type youtube.com at everyday Linux user. And that brings up my um, YouTube channel. And it's a good time to highlight other videos we've got going on. So we've got uh, Linux Mint or Ubuntu Cinnamon, which is better. Um, I've got an install guide for every version of Ubuntu, um, reviews for Puppy Linux and Anti-X, and there's so many more that I've done over the past six months or so. If you like the channel, by the way, it would be good if you could hit the like button for this video and the subscribe button so you can see other videos um, from this channel uh, as they are released. So other shortcut keys, moving on, um, control or delete brings up task manager. It doesn't work the same way as Windows, which brings up, uh, which logs you out. Um, and you can see what tasks are using up all the memory. Uh, control L is for the lock screen. You can control lock T, which is common for most distributions, and that brings up a terminal. There's all these meta keys here. Um, so um, if you look down in this corner here, you've got, you can switch between different desktops, one, two, three, four. You can also use the meta key to do that. So I could do F2, uh, Windows and F2, moves me to the second desktop, three to the third, four to the fourth, etc. So if I go back to one, you can see my screen returns here. And there's, um, like the print key does a screenshot. Um, Shift Control F6 turns the brightness up and down. And you can add in your own shortcuts if you so wish. So to summarize Ubuntu, it is a lightweight distribution. It's very, very good. It's a much better experience for me than Ubuntu itself. I like a desktop environment that stays out of the way and I can just use my applications and it all works. Um, on my own main PC, I tend to use Zubuntu. Uh, I prefer this XFC desktop environment, but Lubuntu is also a really good choice as well. Uh, installation is easy, as easy as all Ubuntu installations. The hardware works. Um, installing software is um, relatively easy, as I've shown you. Uh, the default applications installed by default are decent as well. Customizable desktop. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, so that's it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.